Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for being patient. It's our first broadcast. Welcome to Adventure Bike Touring. I'm Jim Fullerton, uh, one of your hosts. And uh, who's that other guy down there? You have to say something. It's Paul. <laughs> All right. That's Paul Fisher. He's down there. He's going to help me with the presentation here tonight. Um, tell you what, I know we have a few folks. We're going to wait uh, just a little bit before we start. Let me know if you can hear the broadcast right now. Let me see. Tell me if you can see anything. L leave a comment down there. Hey, there you go. Yeah, Kathy Crampton just came on. Let's see. We've got, uh, there's Tammy. Says she can hear us just fine. And there's Tammy's better half. And Big Mark says he can hear us fine. And who else is down there? Let's see. Oh, there's Dan. Hi, guys. Dan says a uh, shout out to hi. Well, we're going to uh, start. I know we have, this is our first one, so we have just a few. I know Larry just sent me a text. Not quite sure how to uh, work this newfangled thing called Facebook, so he's going to He'll probably tag in later on. I just want you all to know that this broadcast will be about, well, maybe 30 minutes. Depends if I can get Paul off of the screen from talking. And within just about four minutes, it'll be uh, live. I mean, it'll be pre-recorded back onto the page again for you to see as well. So if you're late joining, you can watch our shenanigans and all the information we have about ultra urban biking that's uh that's pretty much our theme today how to survive biking in the city and of course many of you are going to be going into manhattan come this uh sunday so we have a lot of even though you know both of us were kind of knuckleheads sometimes joking around but we're going to try to be as serious as possible with a lot of the material here to let you know. So curious, uh, right off the bat, who here has had an opportunity to bike in an urban setting? Uh, put put down the city in the comments. Let me see where, where you've done some urban biking. No one? Yeah, in the comments, you can list, well, just say yes or no, whether or not you've done any biking in the city. Uh, Shanghai? No way. Big Mark says Shanghai. Dan says Philly. Okay, New York City. And see. Oh, tell. Oh, sorry, Tim. <laughs> tell Jill to search for urban riding. I don't know if that will work. Hmm. She can also just go to the um, Adventure Bike Touring page and probably just hit video, the video tab, and it should come up there. But we're kind of dragging our heels here. How about you, Kathy? Where have you have you done any urban bike touring? Oh, just wondering. Casey says she had ridden in New York City, and so did Ben. Oh, sorry. There it is. It's a little slow at my end. Yep. Kathy says New York City. Ben, hey, big shout out to Ben. It's his big happy birthday today. Did you send Ben a happy birthday, Paul? Should I uh, 
Don't, Central. don't worry about it now. <laughs> Too late. Happy birthday, Ben. Happy birthday, Ben. And uh, you know what the stinks about Facebook? It actually tells folks how old you are. So I won't. I won't mention that. So thanks. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Um, let's see. Well, let's go with Paul. You have anything to say for the opening? No, uh, just welcome event? everyone to our first Facebook Live event. And why don't we start off with the uh, first slide there, Jim? Okay. And by the way, uh, if, if you don't interrupt Paul, he's going to talk for the next 45 <laughs> minutes because he has like 600 slides here to show you. So, uh, you know, what you want to do is under the comments, if you see something, that you know or you want to make a comment to you know the, the, ask a question not a problem just post it there and and uh, I'll, we'll try to get to it about the presentation especially some of you who have had some experience tammy was shanghai i've got to hear about that one that's got to be like mad crazy so we'll go ahead and start this this presentation uh, the title of is urban uh, writing S survival skills in new york city and uh, go ahead, Paul. Our uh, objective for tonight is obviously to provide you with an overview to keep you safe and uh, sound in riding in New York City. Some of you have not ridden in the city before, and we want to give you a couple quick pointers and some overview of New York City bike law. Kick it back to you, Jim. Well, this is kind of what we'll be discussing, just so you know. Um, pretty much everything you're going to need uh, to survive this coming Saturday and really for Sunday. any uh, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday and uh, really any urban setting I think this would uh, apply to, don't you, Paul? I do. Okay. So our first topic is what to expect then, Jim. Well, what are we expecting for this ride? A ball, an absolute blast. You know, I, I know I know you've got some bulleted points here, but really, it, it it is. And not only that, I know the mileage mileage is a little bit more than last time last year, but uh, you by the time you finish this route of forty three miles, you're gonna know. You're gonna know you've been on a bike ride. Because it's going to not only require a lot of uh, skill maneuvering through it, but also the endurance that takes place. It's not a whole lot of hills, a lot of inclines when you get to Brooklyn, but not, not too bad. It's just a constant grind on you. But, but also the mental, the mental ability to stay focused and to, you know, constantly looking around your zone to make sure, you know, the guy behind you, but also, you know, every, all the stuff that's happening. And plus you want to absorb everything. So anyway, the, we're going to be hitting uh, two of the boroughs, Manhattan and Brooklyn for sure, uh, going down to Coney Island. What do you think, Paul? Uh, oh, I think the other important thing to mention is you and I have ridden this route before, so it is tested, it's proven. And uh, the other thing that people should be aware of that we are going to use about 50% of the bike lanes and bike paths in Brooklyn. And the other 50% of the route will be actually riding in street traffic. Yeah, it, it will. Uh, when you say street, tra street, uh, street traffic, do you mean we like are, the, uh, the, the bike, the actual bike painted lines or how, what do you mean? Uh, we may be if uh, some of the, City roads actually do have dedicated bike lanes. However, there are some of the streets that we will be riding on that will not. So we'll pay extra special attention to lane positioning and where the bike should be most safest, which is always to the rightmost lane. Mm, okay. That's, I, would, I would definitely agree with that one. I'm thinking of all the car doors that opened up as we were, you know, maneuvering. It's It's amazing how unexact this is because you tell you know you you we're, we're going to show some pictures about with bike lanes in the city and when you get there it looks just looks like a jumbled salad 
you know, there's cars in the bike lane, there's car doors that are swinging open. So that I guess that was the mental part I'm thinking about. You really have to be on your game on this one. It's not like tootling down Pine Creek Trail, you know, and you with your hands in the air, you know. If this is uh this is almost like a white knuckle experience, at least for Paul and I it was. He doesn't drink, so I had to drink twice this much that, that day when we got finished. And uh, as the as it mentions here, you can expect to be in your saddle for at least six hours. Uh, we were a little surprised, and that's that's just saddle time. That's not time you're taking pictures, you know, gawking and spitting off Brooklyn Bridge, and you know, eating a a hot dog at uh, um, Nathan's. Nathan, sorry. Yeah, that's just saddle time. And I know you're looking at, well, wait a minute, 43 miles, six hours. You'll be surprised. And some of you that have ridden in the city before, you kind of know that it's, it's a little slower pace. Am I right here? Can I hear a, a, a that that's about right from everyone out there? Is that what you've found in your experience as well, that it takes just a little bit slower in the city go ahead and comment let me see what your thoughts are on that no thoughts all right moving on are you folks okay are we broadcasting good give me a thumbs up someone come on it's funny the last response i have is from ben at eight minutes after there we go Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Tammy says, let's see if we can bring that up. Tammy says, yep, she's awake. All right. Um, hey, Jim, one last thing you should mention. When we're riding on the city streets, are we going to be riding with any other vehicles? Yes. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, you're going to be riding with thousands of other vehicles, all different sizes, all trucks, cars. But not only that, uh, a lot of people on bikes as well. We're not going to be the only one on uh, using the bike lane. And for much of the bike lanes, it's single file. You know, you're not going to be, again, like the DNL, you know, going hand in hand down there. You're going to be uh, following the guy in front of you. And don't be too surprised if... Someone from the city pops in front of you and you're no longer, you know, following someone from the trail rat group, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going we're gonna to play it safe. Paul's going to be up in the front, uh, weaving our way through the city and I'm going to be picking up any strays, hopefully, and sending them back in the right direction. Uh, so I think we covered what to expect. I think so. Paul, I, should you handle etiquette? I don't know. Well, kind of, yeah. I think we should go over a few. Uh, oh, no, I mean, do you want me reminders. to talk about it? Uh, no, I, I will gladly do that. Really, for you, James? Etiquette. All right, I want to hear this one. <laughs> All right, trail rats. This is just a quick reminder, but this is an intermediate level ride. It will definitely test all your riding skills, specifically when we're riding in New York City and especially through the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is a group ride. This is not an alley cat race through the uh, five boroughs of New York City. No. No. Um, and the most important thing is we will be stopping to regroup. Jim and I have established several regrouping points that we'll be utilizing throughout the ride so that if you want to stop and take pictures, you're more than welcome yeah. to do that. Yes. We will have plenty of time for the group to get back together before we get to our next stage yeah. staging area yeah i i yeah and also you're gonna have to remind paul and i that, that you want to stop for a picture you know because we paul and i are going to be like wired tight on alert to keep you guys safe and to get you through the city we've already done the route so you know if we get a little uptight about pushing you guys through like cattle you're gonna have to slow us down a little bit and you know pull out your camera on the brooklyn bridge and you know take a picture you could do that anytime you want you know but it's our job to hold up the group and you know keep everyone together as best we can but and especially if you see a good place to stop to eat 
Yeah, I'm I'm all for that as well. So even though we're going to write, you know, write it pretty tight, we're also going to be a little loosey goosey as well. Uh, in the comments section right now, tell me if you have a bike or a bell on your bike. Who has a who has a bell right now on their bike? Anyone? A horn? The heck? That's a bike bell. Jim, why is it important that we have a bike bell on our bike? Well, bike bells in the city and in New York City they is required. And you know, Paul and I have been watching some YouTube videos on how the police are uh, enforcing the law with bikers. It's quite shocking. Thank you, my uh, Mark. He does have a a bell, and. Tracy says she has to put hers back on, which in New York City, it is required that you must have a bike bell yeah. to ride in the city. Yeah. W welcome, Tracy. Um, yeah, you, you need a definitely need a bell. Not only that, you what Paul and Paul and I found out that the bells when we're careening down the bike path in the city, especially the pedestrians, folks who are walking, they hear it. Matter of fact. We had we had a guy uh, coming through Brooklyn. Do you remember that, Paul? I do. Stop. Oh no, that was about the light. I'm sorry, but he stopped us and said, "Your light's on." You know, he was like, "You know, what the hell? What are you? It's the middle of the day." He was like offended. No, he was okay about it. And we said it's all about safety. So yeah, if you have a light, bring the light with you. And by the way, if you're using a rear light, which I will use as well. Uh, the the red light should be blinking during the day, but not blinking at night. Just so you know, the, the research says if it bl if you're riding at night, not so much on the DNL trail, of course, but if you're riding at night on the road blinking, the drivers tend to migrate toward the blinking light. So you want to keep it solid. But during the day, uh, I will have a, a a strobe on the back light as well. But the bell is absolutely crucial. Now, the bell is not too effective with the cars and Paul, what, what, what have I found that was more effective? They used to yelling at the cars. Yeah. Yelling. Absolutely. And you can't use the middle finger folks. That doesn't work. So you have to not yell. Like, uh, I don't know if some of you know, Marty, Marty bikes with us on, on the road, but, uh, you know, just a yell, just a, you know, a hoot or something. Uh, would would be perfectly okay because they can't really hear the bells all the time, but certainly other bikers and pedestrians can as well. All right, where are we at here? The uh, last thing, as a quick reminder, is that any bike's really suitable for this ride. However, when we did it, we discovered there's certainly a lot of uh, potholes, bridge abutments. There's a whole bunch of things. I would not recommend taking a road bike on this route. Jim, would you agree with that? Well, I would take a road bike only if your favorite bike shop has wheels on sale that weekend. No, I would not bring a road bike because the first off, the rims, the wheels in your road bike, when they made them, they're not thinking about New York City streets. So they're for a more of a smooth surface. And... Uh, Paul, I can't remember a smooth surface in Manhattan. Can you? Mm, no. No. It, I don't think the Central Park. Central Park was smooth. Yep, you're right. Central Park was smooth. But other than that, you're, I mean, it's pretty rough. So, no, not a road bike. And most important, a tube. Yeah, right down there. Tube, you're going to have to bring a tube with you, folks. Now, what the good news is that uh, Paulie and I will be wearing radios, and if you get a flat, I can call Paulie back <laughs> from the front, and he can uh, change the flat tire, that flat tire. But, no, you want to make sure that you have a spare tube, and most of you are. I mean, I'm looking at the list of go uh, folks going. There are a couple I'm not familiar with. But you want to make sure that you, you at least have one spare tube. Now, there's lots of bike shops in, in Manhattan, Brooklyn and uh, uh, Manhattan area. So, I mean, we can eventually get you straightened out. But 
make sure you bring all that. Uh, how about regrouping? As far as where we're going to regroup? No. How, how is that going to look? How are we going to, are we going to regroup? Yes, we will regroup yeah. several times throughout the ride and we'll, we'll actually make the announcement the morning of the ride exactly where we are going to regroup. Um, there's at least three or four points that we've discovered that are actually great stops for pictures, sightseeing, as well as just general area as far as a large number of bikes to fit. So we'll definitely be utilizing those. Okay. Yeah, regrouping will, as, as Paul said, is will be absolutely crucial. Uh, but that's our job. Don't worry about that. But that's that's something we're we're going to be uh, very much aware of. So, does uh, are there any laws in Manhattan and Brooklyn that we should be aware of, Paul? There, there are laws in New York City, the same as riding in Pennsylvania, as far as riding with traffic. We will be using good hand signals to make sure that the cars see us. And we will definitely be watching out for pedestrians because they are literally everywhere. They're worse than squirrels in Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are. They are. I mean, we've ridden, Paul and I have ridden in the city before, especially Philadelphia. But in Manhattan, you are, that's like ultra, that's like ultra urban. I mean, Maybe Shanghai. I don't know, Tammy. You've been in Shanghai. Maybe it's different and and New York City, but uh, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, are the bike laws uh, uh, enforced in New York? They are absolutely enforced in New York City. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have any run-ins with the police, but we definitely did see police out in force. Um, not only traffic laws, but certainly bike laws as well. So you definitely want to be on your uh, best behavior, so to speak. Mm, yeah. And earlier, I think in the uh, meetup site, there was a phrase I threw out there called uh, withedness. And that's an old teacher, you know, uh, educator phrase. But withedness with biking is that you are, it's almost like a sense where you are, aware of 20 foot foot radius around you of things that are going on like eyes behind your head that kind of stuff where you know there's a car door opening the same time a pedestrian is approaching you in the sidewalk plus you're are you getting too close to the person in front of you on the bike so uh, that's the mental part of it that you you have to be aware of but also following obeying the laws and we're going to show you an example who's ever encountered the bike box in manhattan anyone make a comment there if you've if you've know what i'm talking about we didn't know did we know paul i think we had an idea about what the bike box was but we never really witnessed one up close that's until what it was that ride. i think we were like driving right over them and we're like what is the <laughs> what is that yeah, I thought it. I thought when they said the bike box, it was like, well, like the intersection, you know. But no, it's not the bike box. Anyone with the bike box? No, no comments. Jeez, hey, you guys awake out there? <laughs> Come on. All right, here we go. Uh, absolutely no riding on the sidewalks, uh, as as it says there. Uh, we will be when we get down to. Get down to Coney Island on the boardwalk. That's where we'll be walking as well. The the boardwalk. You can only ride your boardwalk or ride on the boardwalk at certain hours in the early morning. So we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a little bit of walking, not a whole lot. But if you are on the sidewalk, you must walk. And as as I think as Paul said, you must make sure pedestrians have the right of way because they will just suddenly appear and not always at the crosswalk. Sometimes they'll come out from a couple of parked cars. So you uh, really have to be aware of that. Uh, Dan says, uh, at stops, what, do, what 
I'm not sure. What, are you talking about the the bike box? Yeah, he. That's exactly what he's talking about, Jim. Where he's encountered oh, the see. bike box, and I we'll see. talk more about where the uh, bike box comes into play a little bit later as well. How to position yourself within the bike box? Yeah, and they. Uh, well, yeah. Well, uh, you can mention the video, Paul, and I'll, when we got the bike box up there about that one lady's encounter. Um. Let's see where are we at here. Ah, absolutely. Be predictable. And that's that's the big thing about bike rides. Even when you, as you're a roadie, you want to be pre- predictable to traffic. Um, now we're going to have a big advantage because it's going to be like a herd of bikes going down the road. So we're we're going to have a big advantage, and that's in that respect. But still, um, you want to be predictable to the cars. So when you're going through an intersection and a car is trying to make a left and you need to go straight, they're going to be looking to see what you're doing. So you want to be, make sure you, know, you're, you have your head together and you're, you're really confident in where you're going. Don't do not, and this is even on the road riders, you never, ever wave on a car. You never give direction to a car like move on or if you're both at a stop sign or they're turning. You don't direct traffic ever. And that's even if you're solo. You are a vehicle. And the problem with directing traffic is that if something happens, you're responsible yeah, you're responsible if that car gets into an accident. There's a big thing that you directed the car into the path. So uh, just like you don't direct, hopefully you don't direct cars when you're driving your car, you let them make, you know, there's laws for that. Whoever approaches the stop sign first, the right of the person to the right goes, all that good stuff. But make sure you're not weaving traffic on. Uh, that That's something you don't want to get in, involved with, especially in New York City. And always, and I, I know I'm stressing this on the DNL as well, you should always be reading the trail ahead of you. So looking for obstacles. That's that withedness that you have to be aware of. The car doors are open. Do you see a head peeking in the car? You know, movement, anything like that. You should be looking for obstacles or cautionary things. If you get if a car door opens up in your lane and they're there. Some of those four foot car lanes or car, the, the the car doors are four foot. They're blocking the bike lane in many instances. So you really have to know what's happening there. I mean, if you get hit by a if you get involved in something like that, a car door opening, we're calling the ferry for you. That's, that's the end. That's the end of your trip. Uh, something else I was thinking about that uh, car doors. Oh Yeah. When you're on the bike lane, we're going to show some pictures of them. We get away from the the PowerPoint, Paul. When <clears throat> when you're on the bike lane, and it this even pertains to when you're on the road, you know that that right third of the lane on roads in Pennsylvania, anyway, that's your lane. But an assertive and aggressive bike rider, you don't want to be to the right of the bike lane or closest to park park cars. You want to be to the left. You want to be assertive. And you got, I'm not saying cross the line because you, you really shouldn't do that at all because in many cases there's oncoming bikes in the other lane. But you want to be assertive in the bike lane as well, especially if it's a one-way road and cars are parked to your right. You want to be a little bit to the left. Uh, don't you think, Paul? Absolutely. There were some instances where the bike lane will actually be on the left-hand side of a one-way road, and obviously then you want to position yourself to the right-hand side of the bike lane, but you definitely want to you want to be riding on that white line of the bike lane. Okay. Um, yeah. What about independent decisions? <clears throat> if you don't make independent decisions, you end up possibly putting yourself in a bad situation. And in riding in the city, a bad situation can be serious injury if you're not paying attention. And certainly we want to ensure that everyone has a fun, safe ride. So 
certainly just because someone in front of you does something, maybe going through a traffic light or trying to beat a car, doesn't mean that you do the same thing. Make an independent decision, make a safe decision. Remember, bike safety takes no holiday. I like that. That's that should be a bumper sticker. Um, yeah, we covered this. Uh, we did, Jim. I think the most important thing to remind the riders, specifically for this ride, is be visible. So wear fluorescent clothing if you have it. Um, certainly, any type of visual aid for drivers or pedestrians to pick you out of the crowd will help. So uh, drag out the fluorescent orange, drag out the fluorescent green, drag out the fluorescent yellow. Sunday's clown day, so don't be afraid to look. <laughs> look like a spectacle. Yeah. Oh, I see. You have pictures up there now. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I didn't see this one. Um. Oh, I see what you're done. I'm sorry. That was more of the outline. Okay. Uh, Paul, you have a little circle around the traffic light. I do. Um, specifically in New York City, when we get into Manhattan, there will be bike-specific traffic signals. And if you've never ridden in the city, and I'm talking about urban riding, not doing the five-borough ride where there's no traffic, you need to look out for these traffic signals. And we will be sending pictures out and making these available. But if you look on the photo that I have on the screen, in the red circle, there is actually a bike specific traffic light that is red. However, the main traffic light's green. So in that instance, the bikes need to pay special attention and stop short of the crosswalk while traffic is making left-hand turns in front of you. And in New York City, you certainly wanna ride defensively as well as a little bit offensively. You have to always have your head on a swivel because you're never sure when that car is going to try and come around you and certainly cut in front of you or hook you. Right. In this example uh, that Paul has up there on the, the, uh, the screen, certainly the hand, the pedestrian hand is up, so pedestrians aren't crossing. And there's that you really can't make it out that well, but there is a bike light for bikers to follow as well and that green left hand turn that means there's cars going to be turning left at that intersection so you're not going to make it so that's why you have to be aware of that and it really it goes back to also independent decisions where the group we're not going to catch all the lights in new york city i don't think are we paul absolutely not no we're not going to catch all the lights and that means the group is going to be split up in two or three different groups. And that's okay because uh, Paul will be aware of that and he will hold up at the light or something like that. Let the uh, other groups catch up. So you don't need to beat a light in the, the tour that's coming up this Sunday. Ah, uh, Paul. The bike box. The bike box. Hey, can you guys see the bike box in that in that one? Can you see it okay? I'm not sure if it's too small or can you make heads or tails of it? Guys, if you can see the slide on the bike box or the picture showing yep. the bike box, just give us a comment. Yes, I can see that, please. It doesn't <laughs> help if you talk louder. <laughs> So, Jim, what actually is the bike box? The bike box is f a fairly recent addition in, in New York City that they created for bikes to make. It's kind of like a staging area, don't you think, Paul? Yes, it yeah. gives bikers the ability to actually make a safe turn ahead of cars. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's coming through okay. Hey, Big Tim. Tim Foley just signed in. Uh, yeah, and in this presentation, or this the picture up here, you can see, you can clearly see, and really the bike paths in New York City are nicely painted, most of them. 
not all, but I would say, you know, a, the 90 percent of them are really that bright. They, they do. They do a nice job with it. So in this instance, if you were making the left turn up here, you would actually ride up into that bike box and then shimmy over to the left. Yeah, you could, you know, steer over. I mean, there's enough room there. Or you could just kind of, you know, kind of drag your bike over to the left. Normally, what we would do here in Pennsylvania is that we would get into the the far left lane, um, you know, 100 feet before the left turn. Not so much in Manhattan or, or uh, the Bronx or um, Brooklyn. You want to go up to the intersection and then shimmy across if you're making that left. And, Paul, is it okay for the cyclist to have their front wheel on that crosswalk up there? No, you must stop short of the crosswalk, and the police will actually find you if you block a crosswalk because, again, you need to remember, we're in New York City and pedestrians are everywhere, so you want to stop short of that crosswalk. And, Jim, I think the thing worth mentioning about the bike box is when you come to a red light, the bike lane's still going to keep moving up to the red light. So you actually position yep. yourself all the way to the front ahead of the cars that are stopped at the light. So you come up the lane if you're going to be making that left-hand turn, right. position your bike, either shimmy it like Jim said or just do a quick duck walk on it. But position your bike ahead of the car in the left-hand side of the bike box and right. signal that you are going to be making a left-hand turn. Now, we we are going to be traveling in a herd. So normally, um, what what we would do is if there's a red light, you know, you might get that bike box filled up with four or five bikes making a left. Now, we're not all going to be able to make, if we're making that left, we're not all going to be able to do it because there's cars coming up as well. So you have to signal. So you will actually enter the intersection with your hand signal and do it that way as well. Um, whoops, sorry about that. Vanessa brings up a good question. She said, oh, sorry, that's Dan, big Dan. Vanessa mentions, uh, she says, I'm not sure what a bike box is, so I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah, um, a bike box is a painted area on the, on the street. Um, a bike box is pretty much the, the length of the street that has been painted in a square normally with white paint. And you're, as you can see here, it's the, the biker um, logo or the, the, the sign. And when you, do you think they're on all intersections, Paul? I don't, I can't say they were. No, they're definitely not painted as um, brightly or certainly as vibrant as the one that we have pictured in the slide. So you're really going to have to watch out. Um, but the bike box itself is just an area short of the crosswalk. And if you notice that in the picture, that heavy, bold line, that's actually where the cars are going to be stopping. There is a area where the bikes are allowed to position themselves between that um, heavy line where the car stop and the crosswalk. That's actually what the bike box is. It doesn't say bike box, but no. you might you might see the logo um, that marks the bike lane itself. That's actually um, where the bike should be positioned. Yeah, and a lot of this is where you know we're 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 you're going to be learning on the fly, really, when you're in your maneuver, and you're kind of going to kind of see it. But again, our advantage as a large group is that really they're looking at us as a large group. You can't assume that. In other words, normally in PA, when we approach a traffic light, you either get in the line of traffic and stay behind a car, or if it's three or four behind, the cars are stopped, you're allowed to do a go up on the right if they're not moving. 
in Manhattan, like Paul was saying, you're allowed that bike lane. There shouldn't be any cars crossing that. And I found that they're pretty good with that. Don't you think, Paul? Yes, certainly. Yeah, the, cars yeah. were very respectful for staying out of the bike lane. However, as we said earlier, you definitely have to watch for car doors or people or other, certainly other bikes utilizing the bike lane. Yeah. So you're going to be pile for in this example here. You're going to be all, we're all going to be coming up on the right side and then filling that box up. And Dan brings up a good comment. He's mentioned that, uh, some drivers aren't that thrilled with the bike box. And I probably, we didn't encounter that. They, they know it. And, uh, they're really buckling down on uh, the vehicle bike interaction, so to speak, in Manhattan. The police are. Uh, they're pretty good at that. And we have we found them pretty cooperative, didn't you, Paul? Yeah. yeah. Luckily, luckily, we didn't have too many left-hand turns that we are making throughout the route. But drivers were certainly respectful of keeping their position on the road as well as respecting ours. Yeah. Um. And uh, Dan mentions also that he's su he's suggesting they're at the traffic lights, pretty much. Not so much stop signs, though. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. That was that was the big thing we wanted to share with you about the bike box. Anything else, Paul? Do you think of? Uh, nothing related to the bike box. Okay. Oh, what is the fine if you, if as a biker, you enter the crosswalk? $45,000. I have no oh, idea. $200. Remember that 200. video? 200 A biker, you know, a tourist who was using the blue bikes in, in Manhattan. The city some, bikes. The city bikes. They, uh, some, she was innocent and, you know, didn't know it. But that police officer was all over her, pulled her to the side, $200 ticket. Another guy was videotaping. Uh, and they the, the law broken, you ran a red light. Yeah, that was the violation uh, that we heard. So you want to make sure you stay out of that pedestrian uh, zone. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is this is basically a wrap up of some of the earlier highlights that we did the safety tips and certainly making independent decisions. We can't stress that enough. We we will see New York riders riding through red lights, not using hand signals and basically riding in a very erratic manner. Um, just because they do it doesn't mean we do it. And certainly we want to keep you safe. So again, use good judgment. We will use hand signals. If you don't make a light, don't worry. We'll wait for you at the next intersection because as Jim said earlier, there is a lot of traffic lights and we certainly will not be making um, all the lights. So you'll go three, four blocks, you'll come to a stoplight, three, four blocks again, stoplight. So there'll be plenty of time to regroup as well. Yeah. Um. Who here is interested? Are you folks going to be needing to stop and take pictures? Do you think probably are you any picture ph photographers interested in like off the Brooklyn bridge that we should know about? I any? think that's a safe bet that we have a lot of photo togs with us that will be oh, okay. enjoying the city landscape. All right. Those. Well, if you have anything special or that, you know, Spots that we should be aware of, let us know. I'm pretty sure Paul will accommodate you. Um, Paul, how can we make – we can post this. Yes, we will post the link to the presentation that we're using tonight so that you can access it, download it, have a review. We put links on there to some of the uh, bike laws in New York City as well as we have a video for anyone that wants more information on how to use the bike box, there's a great video that was put out by a uh, New Yorker, and uh, we have the link to that as well. Okay. And uh, Terry joins us. Uh, yes, she'll be taking pictures. Jeez, I found that surprising. <laughs> um, no, I, that's not true. 
And Tracy says, always, always <laughs> photographs. Come on. Tracy, you've been doing some nice photography, uh, posting it. It's been very nice. And KC says, always, always as well. So definitely picture taking. And that's pretty much it, Paul? Or no, the... Oh, that that oh. is it. We have a question and answer period that if oh. anyone would like to ask a specific question that we haven't covered here tonight, you can post it underneath the video or post it to the group chat and we will answer that live for you. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions that you might have, we'll even post them up here because because uh, no doubt. uh other folks will be interested in it as well. Let's see. Um, everyone's okay with the ferry as far as uh, knowing what to do there. How many folks have done the Manhattan trip last year? Give me a shout out. Did you do the Manhattan trip last year? If you did, let us know. Tammy's asking, is there a parking lot at the port? And yes, there is a parking lot at the port, specifically across the street. Parking is $16 for up to 12 hours, which should definitely cover you for the duration of this ride. Yeah, agreed. And Jill, me, hey, welcome, Jill. Me, do you, does that mean you have a question or no? Okay. Or you maybe you're answering about the photography as well. You'll be a picture taker. Yes. Yes. Tracy just said, I went last oh, year and it was awesome. Gotcha. gotcha. No, Jill went. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jill went to, uh, and Tracy says that she went as well last year. Um, and of course, Big Dan went last year as well. Yeah, Vanessa did the five barrows. So you have kind of a, a taste for the road conditions and things like that. So definitely the five barrows is something that you're familiar with. And yeah, Jill was there last year. Yeah, good. Um, I think one of the uh, things we want to mention, Jim, is we will be on the 9 o'clock ferry from Port Imperial over to Midtown. So once you get to the parking garage and you park your vehicle, you want to go inside the waterway office and actually purchase your round trip ticket. There will be a slight surcharge because you are taking a bike over, but certainly purchase a round trip ticket. They'll give you two tickets, one for the inbound and then one for the outbound, but make sure that you're on and ready for the nine o'clock ferry over to uh, Midtown. Yep. I think it was a dollar 25 for the bike. Correct. And Tracy wants to, or Tracy wants to know that we've figured out any place to find shelter if it rains. There's a ton of places. Yeah, lots of bars along the route, and no, there, there's there's lots of uh, places we can take shelter in, in New York City. And Tammy wants to know: uh, Is anyone else going to spend the night there? Yeah, I know that uh, Tammy and Mark, or they mentioned earlier that your guys are going to be spending the night there. So anyone else spending, uh, you can also, you know, well, you can connect on Facebook as well. Uh, Tracy asked a good question. What do you think, Paul? Do we need to bring bike locks? When Jim and I did the ride about three weeks ago, we did not bring bike locks. Um, everywhere that we went, our bikes went with us. Certainly, there'll be enough riders on this ride that if you're going to stop, grab something to eat or grab a drink, there'll be someone there to watch your bike. But no, you do not need a bike lock for this ride. We will not be leaving the bikes in any area that could be potentially um, prone to theft. Right. And I know I've shared this with, with Paul a, a few times. A bike lock is simply to slow down the thief that's it it gives you 15 seconds to chase them down or go over as they're breaking the lock those locks are not foolproof and that's that's even in the lehigh valley here um my rule 
the bike never leaves my eyeballs. And Paul knows that for a fact on uh, this, I do a Wednesday road ride and it was rained out. So we kind of went down to the, the diner and I brought the bike into the diner with me uh, right down the, you know, in Allentown off of, uh, uh, what was that? 222. 222. Yeah. So True the story. bike bike should not leave your sight. Even if it's locked, it should not leave your sight. Uh, but in this instance, we're going to have quite a number of people that if you need to use the restroom or go take a picture or go into the store, uh, just let someone know to keep an eye on the bike. And I mean to actually touch the bike to make sure it's there next to you because stuff happens quickly. Uh, Big Dan says, uh, mention the bike when buying a ferry ticket. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to mention when you go and purchase your ticket at the fair, you want to let them know that, in fact, you have a bike because they'll check. They check when you get on the ferry. They, it happens quick. I mean, these guys are pretty experienced, but they're going to know if you, you know, you ponied up that extra buck or not. And if you're not, you have to go back. Um, That's a good reminder, Dan. Yeah, that is. Uh, and. Yeah, you. I was going to say, Paul and I, we actually walked up to the, the booth the, the when we paid with our bikes, didn't we? Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah. Again, never leaving the bike behind. Um, something I was going to mention about that: the bikes on the ferry. Oh, the ferry terminal, really nice. So after your drive, uh, where are we coming from? You know, an hour and a half, two hours. When you arrive at the parking area. The, the the terminal is like right across the street and Paul and I will be out there probably uh, waving you on. But there's nice restroom facilities in the port. So if you get there early enough, you use the restroom facilities, even uh, little mini marts for you to pick up water or snacks and stuff like that. Or ice cream, Terry ice cream. Yeah, Paul and I, I at least I had some afterwards and it was, it was pretty good. Pretty good. I don't know about nine o'clock in the morning, but after the ride. Uh, after the ride. Uh, I don't know, Chuck. Welcome, Chuck. What do you think? Uh, I actually checked that out, Jim. Anyone 62 or over actually gets a senior discount, and you'll save 75 cents on your one-way fare each way. You may you may qualify, Chuck. Yeah, you might. I don't believe Chuck's over 62 yet. But... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> But yeah, there is a discount uh, for for seniors. I think I remember that there. But uh, yeah, the ferry ride is. Uh, I wouldn't say it was picturesque. Would you, Paul? Well, no. The one good thing is the ferry ride is relatively quick. It's probably uh, about twelve minutes or so from Port Imperial over to uh, Midtown. So relatively quick, uneventful. If you get seasick, you won't experience it on this uh, quick ferry ride. Yeah, and that's kind of the reason why we chose this terminal, even though it's a little bit more pricier than others. These guys move you along. I mean, you are on there and across the the Hudson lickety split time. So thank you, Terry. Absolutely. See, Terry, Terry's in my camp. Um and last year, Dan, do you remember what happened last year at the ferry? Dan, uh, last year, what happened? I'm not sure who it was. It may have been Tommy, Tom uh, T T two, I think he's known as. He um, was in the restroom, and we and we were all, you know, it's it's a little chaotic. You can't really do head counts. You're you're kind of like, okay, everyone get on the ferry, but poor Tom was still in the, in the restroom, and we had to leave Dan behind to uh, usher him across, and eventually caught up with us. No big deal. So we we we're really good at improvising uh if situations happen. Um any other questions about the tour in Manhattan coming up? You've all had a chance to take a look at the uh you know the GPS as far as where we're heading. Um Paul, do you have you want to just quickly go over? the route itself yeah any highlights well certainly we'll be seeing a lot of uh 
picturesque places. Certainly the Brooklyn Bridge is a very uh, nice ride over to Brooklyn. Uh, we will be passing through Prospect Park. We will be seeing a lot of the old brownstones in Brooklyn, which is very nice to see if you're not familiar with that area of Brooklyn. Um, and then we'll be passing the Greenwood Cemetery and making our way over to the uh, Greenway. And it's about a four or five mile ride on the bike path over to Coney Island. Um, yeah, I, I found that trail interesting. I never knew that was there, but it was rather picturesque, especially the skyline of Manhattan. And we get to ride under the uh, Verrazano Bridge. So that was that was nice. Under, yeah. Um, one thing you may be aware of is that when we get off the ferry and head south for about three miles, just to give you a little heads up, we will be in the area of the event that took place uh, last year. And you may last be aware, week. Or last last sorry, last week, uh, with the bite the 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 death of the bikers, the various bikers on the bike path. But we will be right there at that intersection at um, making that left turn. Something in Manhattan and, well, all of uh, the five boroughs, is something called ghost bikes that you may see or bikes painted white. I think there's like 170 of them that folks have put up that it signifies, you know, someone, a, a biker died at that particular location or near it. And no doubt in that area, there's going to be a lot of memorials, roadside memorials with flowers and stuff. So, you know, we're going to stop and pay our respects and, uh, and then move on from there, just so you know. Um, okay, let's see what Dan's up here. Hmm. Is there going to be a hot dog eating contest in Coney Island? I geez. that'll be a no, no on our account. If no. if you want to try and go for the record, you're more than welcome to do so. But yeah, I I wouldn't advise that. You're only like halfway into the tour, and that means you got to carry all those wieners with you or not. And yeah, I wouldn't. But they're pretty good. They're they're a little pricey, don't you think, Paul? For what you got, I thought uh, I was expecting a little bit more from Nathan's. I, I really was. Yeah, they're like five bucks a pop. And uh, I mean, they're good sized hot dogs. Don't get me wrong. It's just more nostalgic and it's kind of a neat place. The place is mobbed with, with folks that go there, especially if it's a nice day. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tammy says go for it. So we're going to be signing off here in a couple minutes. I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, if you get a chance, share this on your Facebook. Share it with uh, your friends. Let us know that, that we're here. Big Ray just entered the room. Welcome. Hey, Ray. If you have not seen the entire presentation, uh, in about just a few minutes, it will be posted on uh, our Facebook page and really you can watch it anytime. I wouldn't say it was all that, you know, Paul and I weren't all that interesting, but certainly some of the highlights you may want to uh, be aware of. So you may want to view it on your own. And it looks like Trey, it looks like Terry's into the hot dog contest. All right. Why? Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. We appreciate that. And uh, Morty, AKA Craig. Oop, there you go. Oh, okay. You, you've already stopped there for the hot dogs at Coney. Okay. Um, yeah, really, you folks are. If, if I can tell them, Paul. Hopefully, you don't, you won't you won't yell at me. You you all were kind of like guinea pigs for us as well. We wanted to, as far as this this live streaming, we wanted to test it out for ourselves and see how comfortable we felt to see if there was some sort of interaction on your part and. We think it went okay. We're going to be doing a few others, a few other live streaming clinics, if you would, and especially for the multi-day multi tours that are coming up next year as far as how to get ready and things like that. 
we will also be doing uh, in Genesis uh, more of a mechanical, like you actually have to go there and Jimmy will be showing us some of the mechanics like triaging on your bike and things like that if a chain breaks or stuff like that. So that's coming up next year as well. But we're, we're, we're going to really utilize uh, Facebook Live, and it sounds like it's okay. It seemed like it went all okay, okay for you folks. Oh, you're welcome, Tammy. Thank you. Paul, any last words? No, we just look forward to seeing everyone on Sunday, and uh, we look for a very fun ride. So hope to see you there and hope for good weather. Yes, good weather. Gonna be a little cool, so make sure you iron your woolies for that day. It's going to be a little nippy in Manhattan. Maybe eh, it'll still be autumn though. So thank you for joining us on Thanks, uh, guys. Adventure Bike Touring, and we'll let you know when other things happen as well here. Uh thanks for thanks for taking your time and coming out. So we'll see you then. All Take right. Take care. Good Take night. care, folks.